Welcome back, team. It's your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And I realized that in the first part of, of this series that I didn't explain a couple of the extensions that I'm using uh, inside of Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you those extensions that I'm using so you have access to those as well. Some of you guys already figured it out. But if not, I'm going to show you exactly what those extensions are, team, so you can have those inside of Visual Studio Code as well. And then we're going to go in and we're going to set up our development environment for those of you who um, if you didn't install XAMPP no problem this video is going to walk you through going through installing XAMPP and it's actually going to show you how to set it up so you can have your local web dev server going and then we're going to move forward and we're going to set up a small PHP application that is going to act as a back end so we're going to have this system on our computer that will allow us to uh, to basically pretend that we are working with some sort of remote server somewhere and this is what developers do um, all day every day because sometimes it's not as easy to work with remote servers now I use what's called the jam stack and what that does well it, it, it and I, I, I say I use the jam stack I use that term loosely because I, I'm not building new websites every day using the jam stack right I'm not even building new websites every day but the Jamstack allows us to sort of, we don't have to worry about the back end stuff. And that's way down the road, team, but we'll get to that point. The goal is, is to, is, is as you learn stuff, you're able to go out and build stuff. So, like, just from the very last video, you know how to set up an HTML form. So you can go in and you can start, start experimenting. You can build an HTML page. You can put some basic text on there, throw some form fields on it, see what it looks like, team. And then in this video... In this in this second part you're actually going to see what you can make a form do and when you put that form out on the internet if you set it up right it'll do what you want it to do now we aren't going to go all the way that far just yet team but we will get to that process if you stick with if you stick with this series if you sign up or or if you sign up to the code 365 startup lab to support the channel you're going to have access to all this same stuff as well it's just that it, it, it there'll be there'll be more segmented um, and a, a little more detailed team, but for the most part like all this stuff is the same I'm pulling these videos literally right out of the 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 HTML and mastery, but anyway team that's enough of that. Let's get to it So I am now down here in the lower left hand corner as you can see and I shouldn't be impeding anything down here When we really get into the coding stuff But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the Windows key and I'm gonna type in a code and this is gonna bring up Visual Studio Code and I'm just gonna show you those extensions I was talking about uh, we don't need this and I'm just gonna bring this up and I'll zoom in so you guys can see well actually let me close this window by hitting control W and now I'll hold control and Visual Studio Code is different it doesn't let us zoom but if we do a control and the plus key we can zoom in on everything and we'll go right over here to these boxes off to the uh, the right side of the screen click on those and then at the very top you just type live server and live server 5.6.1 will pop up you just click there and then you can go right over here and you can just hit install team and also we're going to be installing i think it's rainbow brackets r-a-i-n-b-o-w brackets or is it yeah rainbow brackets right here rainbow uh rainbow b-r-a-c-k-e and so we got rainbow brackets right there 0 0.0.6 and this this isn't this isn't what I was looking for. Uh, there's a there's a different program. Hold on, I think it's called Indent Rainbow. Indent, yeah, there it is. Indent Rainbow version 7.4.0. And Indent Rainbow, what it does is it adds those colors next to our our code, so we can see where our indenting is. And if you guys don't understand the 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 whole idea of indenting, it's just so that we can. It makes our code easier to read so we can read it better another human being can read it better that's it but those are the two main extensions you're going to see and if i'm using if some other extension hopefully i remember to call it out but also what you can do is as you learn more stuff you can just go over in here and you can just look around at the extensions there's all kinds of stuff you can install you can install stuff for, to do timers and to do lists and i'm, I'm talking about just like with the application like you can keep track of i mean there's the point is there's all kinds of extensions and then uh, a lot of you you'll reach the point where you'll be able to go in here and write your own extensions and, and, and other people will be able to get them and use them but those are the the two things that I saw that just stood out that uh, that I didn't tell you guys about I apologize about that team 
but now we're going to get into the second part of the series and we're going to set up our local web dev server all right team so let's get to it all right team so we are here on the desktop i'm going to hit the window well we don't need the windows key we're just going to right click here on my face and we are going to go new folder and in new folder we are going to re well we're going to rename this folder to html input in put elements elements all right team now we got it well, well we already got a folder with that name we're just going to say yes and now we got this empty folder here so we're good we're going to double click this folder and there is a ah this isn't what i want it this is i'm going to take this out of here actually and uh because this is the footage for this course i'm going to put this down here and then so this is the intro video and then this is the video i'm recording right now so inside this folder we're just going to click open with code and we are going to double click to make this full screen and we've got this basic html document in here and you guys you guys understand this you remember how to make this using the asterisk symbol i'm sure so we're going to hit save and it's going to ask us for a name we're just going to name this index and hit enter and i, I spelled it wrong so we got to go over here we got to rename this and we just go index all right team so now we're going to do we're just going to make a basic form element and we'll leave we'll we'll leave the action blank for now and we will go down here and we're just going to add a couple fields just like we did before input fields team just regular old input fields and i don't like it when there's red here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and i'm going to say format document and that looks a little better all right so inside of our form we're just going to type input and now we have an input we're going to have a text type we're going to give this a hold on team move this back control z let's do this again input there we go and we're going to have a text type and we're going to give this a value is it do we need a value team we got text type we need a we need a name that's what we need we need name is going to be equal to and we're going to call this uh username user name and down underneath that so we're going to hit alt shift and hit down to duplicate this and where it says text we're going to make this p-a-s-s-w-r-d and over here where it says name we're just going to say p-a-s-s-w-r-d and actually we could do something like if we want to we could do we name these anything we want anything we want so we could say user password so now we've got a name input and a password input and every form needs a button so we could go input and we can give this a form of input and then we have to set the value of this input so right inside of here we just go value and we're going to set that value to submit and actually this isn't supposed to be input this is supposed to this is supposed to be submit submit so now when we save we don't have our live reload here so we're just going to alt f4 and close out visual studio code and then we will right click and we will say right click inside of this folder we'll say open with code and this will open in visual studio code and then we will get our live reload at the bottom of the screen so when that's set up we'll just hit go live and it's going to open in another browser window for me because that's how it all gets down over here we'll bring that onto this screen we'll hold the windows key and hit it right bring that off to the right and then we can just arrow through all these open windows and we're just going to select visual studio code and then we do a control b and make that go away and now we have our our input up here now we don't know what this this says so right let's give this um let's give it a label we'll say pat well we'll say username and we'll add that right there and down here we'll do the same thing so we'll just go down to this line hit control enter to make a line beneath it and we're going to say pass word pass w-o-r-d man it's getting late team it's getting late all right so we'll save and so now we got a username and a password now if we because username and password and all these input fields that we're using they're all inline elements so they just they naturally just line up next to each other if we want to one atop another then we got to go about this in a whole different way we could use breaks so we could just go br tab and save and now we got this field underneath username password we could do the same thing we go br tab save and now password <laughs> but but look right because we don't have a br right there so we got to go br tab save and now it looks good kind of because our buttons in the in a in a real janky place and so we go here we're going to move this button right same thing b r tab save 
Now we can make these block level elements, but we use CSS to do that. And so, right, what I'm, what I'm just showing you is that, that we don't have to go and use CSS for everything. When we need to build something, we just start building team. We can go into CSS and we can refine it if we need to. Now we could go up here, we could add another BR by hitting Alt Shift and save. And now we got a little space and a form looks fairly decent team there's nothing wrong with this this is a this is a decent it's a decent good looking form now we've covered the basic elements we got text input we've got uh, a password input and and, and, the, and so here's the deal team these are all these are all well they're all inputs obviously <laughs> but they're these are all text inputs team and there's different there's different attributes that we can give each of these to make them do different things so like we gave this just a regular text attribute a type of text what we can do is we can go up here and like when we type a name it just shows up but in password it's blocked out so nobody can see it now this doesn't mean it's like super secure it's encrypted or anything it just means that nobody can look at it the computer the browser just doesn't show this because if somebody's standing over your shoulder, you don't want them to see your password, right? But you get this little dot right here, the browser, uh, I think it took it away. But sometimes you get this little symbol here at the end and it'll be like, hey, do you want to show your password? You know what I'm saying, team? So these are two of the input fields. All right, team, so for us to move on and, and really get the full experience here, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to set up a PHP server. And I can't remember if we've done that already, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go over into our browser window and we're going to hit control T and we're going to type in XAMP and our search result is going to bring up uh, the XAMP installer for Apache Friends. But what we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, yeah, we'll just go here, ApacheFriends.org and on this main page we pick our operating system and what it's going to do is it's going to open this other window and it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do? And in this case, we're going to say, yo, we want to save this and we'll go save as and we'll just save it to uh, our downloads folder. So we'll save, boom, and it is running the security scan and then it's gonna open up team and we are gonna install XAMPP. And what XAMPP is gonna do is gonna give us a full PHP server environment. So we're gonna say yes when it's done downloading to open it. And if it just, down if it just downloaded, it probably went into your downloads folder. So you're going to go into your downloads folder and it says important because an active because an activated user account control UAC on your system. Some functions of XAMPP may not work. It's just a Windows security thing, right? And so you go through here and we're going to install install everything. So you're going to install well not don't install everything. Team going to install going to install MySQL. We don't need FileZilla. We don't need Mercury or Mailer. We don't need Tomcat. You can install Perl if you want. Maybe you want to learn the Perl programming language at some point. Um, but let, let's walk through these. So FileZilla is just the FTP server, but we're working locally, so we don't need an FTP server. And then, of course, we got a mail server, and I have no idea what Tomcat is, team. Uh, PHP, that's why we're downloading this whole thing, so we can use PHP in order to return us some data when we submit our form. And then we're going to need uh, PHP My Admin. That's going to give us an admin panel for PHP. We don't need Webalizer, and we don't need fake send mail, team. So you hit next and it's just going to put this right on your C drive in the XAMPP folder. Now I already have this installed so I'm not going to continue from this point on. I'm just going to close this out. But when you continue that folder is going to end up on your C drive. So what we can do is we can hit the, um, the Windows key and we're going to hit I think it's Windows Windows E to open up Explorer and if we go to our C drive we will see this XAMPP folder. And in the XAMPP folder, you have this folder called htdocs. But before we get to there, and I almost forgot, team, we're going to open up our XAMPP control just by double-clicking that. And you may get a Windows security alert. Just say OK. And you're going to go in here. You're going to make sure uh, your Apache server is started. So it needs to be green. And you're going to make sure your MySQL server is started. And it needs to be green. Now, we're not going to be using MySQL server. Um, we're just going to be using the Apache web server, which is going to give us access to PHP. So if that's green, we are good to go, team. And if you look over here, it's going to give us two ports. It's going to give us a local host port 80 and a local host port 443. And if you guys can't see that, I apologize. It's really tiny. Um, but just make sure you got your stuff set in green. And then when you go back to your browser, all you have to do is type in local host colon 80. And this is going to open up. Uh oh, I messed up. What did I do wrong? So let's try this again. Localhost colon 
right? And that opens up our local host. Now, mine is already set up, but I'm going to show you guys how to go in and set yours up too, team. So that's how you get to that local host. And we can also use local host 443, I believe. So we go 443, enter. Oh, object not found. Let's see, local host 443. The requested URL was not found on the server. If you entered the URL manually, please check your spelling. Try again. Oh, it's because we have a dash instead of a colon. So we'll go back, put a colon there, enter. And let's see, bad request. Let's try this one more time. Uh, your browser or proxy sent a request to this server cannot send a request the server cannot understand if you think this is a server error please contact the webmaster oh boy team uh, so we're going to stick to port 80 for now the deal is is port port 443 is the http port it's a secure port so we may we have to access that in a different kind of way but right now we're going to stick to port 80 so what we're going to do is once you have everything set up and you get your xamp folder and you got everything running you're going to go into this folder ht docs which is where is it at ht 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 there we go ht docs and in here right i already have these files because i moved them over that's why you saw my php page when i ran localhost um, but if we go back into our browser now i'm just going to hit windows and type in edge and if we go to localhost l-o-c-a-l localhost and we go into port 80 We should get this is what we should get we should get nothing team so what we're going to do is we'll take this and we'll just put it we'll just minimize it for now and we can go back to our main folder which is right here and we're just going to copy both of these control c and we'll go back into our ht docs folder and we're going to paste them here right and so i have this php folder i'm going to get rid of this just to demonstrate how this is done and so we'll save and now when we bring up our local host we should see well let's close these both out now if you get if you got your index.html inside of the htdocs folder that is a web server it's the same kind of thing that we've been using over here in our live server and we might as well turn off our live server now because we aren't going to need it so we'll open up our web browser again and i'm using edge right now so i'm just going to grab edge we'll bring that over to the side and we're on localhost let's just hit enter and it brings up that page now if we put some information in here nothing's gonna happen right it just we hit submit and, and nothing goes down and that's because this this doesn't do anything like the action says to well I have post in here but let's take this out all right team so we've got we've got our action there we'll hit save and we got to get rid of that semicolon I mean not the semicolon but that quotation mark we'll hit save with control s we'll go back over here refresh our page and we're going to retry and now we'll try this again submit and see nothing happens team so what we're going to do is we're going to write a basic php file that will return us some sort of data when we submit our form team so i will see you in the next video where we build our simple php form team well not our simple php form but our simple php application that will return us data when we re when we send our form